Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and today we are taking care of some preventative maintenance on our 2004 Gallardo by replacing these lovingly named Misfire Tubes. Right, so these small tubes that look like short brake lines are actually designed to carry exhaust pulses from the front of the catalytic converter to a sensor to detect misfires should they happen. However, on the early Gallardos, they are only made out of mild steel, and therefore over time they will rust, corrode, and clog up, and then errantly trigger the misfire sensor when no misfire actually exists, and that's a problem. Now, Lamborghini did issue an updated part for this at some point that just makes these lines out of stainless steel. However, they're very proud of them. Uh, if you'd like to order these from Lamborghini, be prepared to pay $1,600, wait for it, each. <laughs> so not only are we gonna be replacing these in our car today, we're gonna be building our own. Now in fairness, I did look around the aftermarket and you can buy uh, third-party stainless steel misfire tubes for between three and $600 per pair. However, uh, if you've watched this channel, you could guess that one of my toxic traits is that I will do almost anything myself and learn new skills in order to avoid paying anyone more than I think I should for parts or services. So here we are. And with that said, let's get stuck in. To build and replace the misfire detection tubes on your pre-LP Gallardo, you'll need the following tools and supplies. A ratchet and various extensions, a flathead screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket, a 10 millimeter box or flare nut wrench or equivalent crow's foot, a small deburring tool, a flat file, some pliers, a hacksaw or your cutoff tool of choice, a lever style or hydraulic brake line crimping tool, roughly three feet of 3 16 stainless steel brake tubing, two M10 by 1.25 brake line fittings, optionally a tubing bender and bonus points for the penetrating lube of your choice. I've left some Amazon affiliate and other links in the description where you can find some of the specific tools and materials I'm using. If you order from one of the Amazon links, it'll help the channel. With supplies in hand though, step zero will be to use some of the penetrating lube to marinate the threaded fittings on your catalytic converters for a day or so before kicking things off. With marination in process, step one will be to remove the air box. This may be more or less fiddly depending on if you still have the secondary air pump installed, but otherwise it's just a matter of a few hose clamps and a handful of bolts before you'll be able to pop it out of the way. With access to the top of the transmission you should now be able to see the right hand side tube entirely and the inboard end of the left hand tube. To undo the old tubes I would recommend a flare nut crow's foot and a ratchet handle for the best odds of breaking them loose without rounding off the hex fittings then using a box wrench to finish the removal. I'd also suggest chasing the threads on the cats to ensure smooth reinstallation. Over on the workbench now, we're gonna use some loose electrical wire to gauge the length of our irregularly shaped tube. Pinch the wire against the tube as you go and then mark the end. It's now time to deploy our new coil of 3 16 stainless steel tubing and new fittings. We will use the wire to mark the length of the tubing that we need, leaving a little extra since we'll lose some length to the flares and want to make sure we have some margin for error in our bending process later. We're making our cuts with a cutoff wheel here to avoid work hardening the material. This isn't something you would have to worry about with softer metals, but with stainless steel in particular, if you use a traditional tubing cutter to do this, it would actually harden the steel and make our task of deforming the ends into flares more difficult later. With the tubes cut to length, we just file the ends flat and then deburr and chamfer the inside edges. Your garden variety brake flaring kit may not be enough to make headway with the much harder stainless steel that we're working with here, so you'll need one of the more robust lever action or hydraulic crimping tools to get the job done. I found this one on Amazon for under $100 and it survived the experience. You could also explore the option of taking your materials and measurements to a hydraulic fitting shop if you're not feeling adventurous. With tubes cut to length, clean the outside of the last couple of inches of tubing with some brake cleaner to remove any residue that might cause slippage, then follow the direction on your flaring tool to clamp the work into place, choose and lube up the correct die to achieve a 45 degree bubble flare on one end, and only one end of your tube. Remember to then slide a new stainless steel threaded fitting onto the tube before flaring the second end. Tubes now flared and fitted, the last task before reinstallation is bending our new tube to match the old one. This does not have to be exact as there's a little wiggle room to work in the car, but each end of the new tube should align spatially with the old tube. A lever style tubing bender will help avoid any potential kinks, but otherwise this is more art than science to get right. The last step will be to reinstall the tubes into place. Beginning with the outboard end, start the threads by hand in the cat housing before bringing any tools into play to reduce the chances of cross threading. 
Pause before you fully snug this fitting to allow the tube to rotate as you insert the non-fitting end into the rubber sensor hose and fasten that clamp. Then go back and lightly tighten the fitting into the cat. From this point, the process should be exactly the same for the other side and reassembly the reverse of disassembly. So there you have it. We have successfully replaced the misfire detection tubes on our 2004 Gallardo for a total spend of about 150 bucks. So, <laughs> with that future problem avoided and around 3,000 of our dollars still in our pocket, uh, that is where, we're going, where we're, we are going to end today. Excuse me. Uh, we hope you found the video uh, informative, if not entertaining, maybe encouraged you to try it yourself or discouraged you from trying it and just sent you kind of looking for the uh, less than horrific aftermarket solutions for this. Um, and uh, maybe saved you a headache down the road if you had not replaced these already or were chasing a misfire that uh, doesn't actually exist. Anyway, with that said, thanks for watching. I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and we'll see you all in the next video, if not at the track.